it's time to do a little prep on the mini of the month. This is Najda the White from Reaper Miniatures, and this is uh, going to be my guide for how I prep the model. So you can see it's a multi-part miniature, comes with a slot of base, there's four pieces to it, and this is kind of how I deal with the metal miniatures. One of the, the things that I want to do is I want to build a scenic base. So you could glue it in with the tab, that's what a lot of people do, that's the simple fastest way to attach the model to the base, but I am going to build a quick and dirty scenic base. So I'm going to use some of this cork and I break off a piece there uh, and we're just going to stick some Elmer's white glue on on the base make sure we cover all of the base except for the slot and we're just going to make sure that the bottom of the cork the bottom of the cork fits within the uh, uh, within the, the borders of that base it can actually hang over on the top but not the bottom so we'll glue that down now we're going to stick this in my little uh, gravel mix here uh, to fill in the rest of that groundwork and we're going to set that aside to dry, but I mean that's basically what we're looking at. I'm going to paint that later. Now we need to get to trimming, cleaning, and pinning the metal model. So I'm going to clip that tab off. Again, you could use the tab to glue directly into the base uh, if you're just simply trying to put the model together. We're going to put together a little scenic base here. So I'm going to file that down, make sure it's nice and flush. Uh, so I'm using a needle file to do that, and I used uh, uh, triangle clippers or angle clippers to get the uh, the tab off. We're also going to remove the two horns and the trophy rack and the uh, the staff from the metal sprue. So we're going to remove that uh, and we're going to file off the little burrs and edges that are created from that because that's going to allow us to pin. Now pinning typically involves a, a pin vise uh, and paper clip. Uh, you can see I used a hobby knife there to kind of give myself a, a sight uh, that you just press the edge of the hobby knife in and kind of make a little crosshair so that the uh, the drill bit of the pin vise can grab. But I decide that uh, I'm actually going to switch up that size uh, and I'm using instead going to use a drill bit and some really fine wire. So here's the, uh, I'm going to just fast forward to uh, the pinning done because that was really uh, not a good process to capture on camera with uh, how fine those pins are. And in fact, uh, this is probably a little bit of overkill, uh, especially with the horns in the trophy rack. But I do strongly recommend pinning the staff hand there and we're going to pin the base here so I, you can see I drilled into that uh, rock base a couple of millimeters cut out a little piece of uh, uh, of the paper clip and we're ready to go so now I'm going to put the uh, I'm going to put the horns in I've already pre-drilled the holes but I need to trim the, the actual those little wire pins down so that it fits into the slot do a little more drilling just to make sure that we're there. Now when you use a drill, make sure you're, you go very slowly. Don't go fast. You don't want to go with a high-speed drill because that will actually heat up the metal uh, and not accomplish uh, a whole lot. I'm um, going to stick some uh, crazy glue in there or super glue, CA glue, um, and put the horn in place. And I'm just going to do that for all the other pieces. Now I typically begin with the smallest pieces, the pieces that are closest to the center of the model, because those are going to be the most stable and you want those to dry. Uh, because when you're working with the, the fiddliest bits, the uh, extremities of the model, you want to have uh, at least some of those pieces already firmly in place, especially if they're going to be harder to get to. For example, if the staff is positioned in such a way, it would be more difficult to get those horns in because you're going to have to maneuver your fingers around the staff. That's why I'm going to do the horns first, and I'm going to do the same thing with the, uh, the trophy case. I have to trim the pin off the trophy case. Again, the pin really only needs to be a few millimeters off from the piece, and you can see it just pops into place. Now, if I was doing this for speed uh, or for comfort, I probably wouldn't pin any of those three pieces because they're very small, um, but I'm, I guess I, I, I'm, I'm a bit of overkill here, so I will do uh, pin all the pieces. Uh, so now I'm going to put the staff hand on again have to trim That piece and I'm just doing a little dry fit here. I'm also trying to figure out um, Exactly how I want the staff to sit is it going to go across with the top towards the left of the model or the or the right of the model? Uh, so I'm trying to work out positioning uh, and uh, I'm actually decide not to go that configuration I want to do something a little bit different have the staff kind of crossing against the body there and it's a good idea to dry fit things and make sure that they're good. So there we go. That's going to be the final position. And I have the pin on the bottom of the model. Now I could paint the model that way separately from the base and then attach both. Uh, and, and I do that occasionally. But uh, for our purposes here, I'm just going to drill a little hole there into the base. 
uh, and I'm going to go ahead and put the model in. Now it is cork, so I'm going to have to press fairly firmly there, make sure I've got a good firm, snug fit, hold it in place for a little bit, and let that dry. Okay. So we're almost done with prep. That was actually the longest part of the prep is the pinning. Uh, it is tedious work, so uh, that is one of the downsides to uh, using a multi-part metal miniature such as this one. Uh, I'm now going to stick it on a base here to paint. So I use a sticky tack. Uh, you can get that like poster tack anywhere. And I use like an old, you can use an old cork. Or I'm using an old bottle of paint. And I'm going to prime the model with an airbrush. Um, I'm using a... Uh, Vallejo Black Primer. This is a PVA primer. Uh, for those of you new folks that don't have an airbrush, um, you can go ahead and use a miniature primer. Uh, either P3 is my favorite or uh, uh, the spray can primer. Uh, but you can also use Citadel or Army Painter. It's up to you. P3 is just my favorite. Just I, It just does the best job. So I do black and then I'm actually going to do a, what's called a zenithal prime. Take some gray primer and actually kind of spray it down in an angle. And you can see what that's doing is that's uh, leaving uh, the top most parts of the, the model where the light's going to hit uh, white or gray. And it's going to leave just enough black to sit in the shadows there. That's going to help me painting later. So that's it for this video.